Hello, it's James and welcome to our eighth, I think it's eighth, eighth um, Risk OSC program tutorial. And in this we're going to be using a template editor to make windows with buttons really easily. So first of all, we're going to need the template editor. So if you go into the package manager and uh, we're going to search for WinEd. Here it is, top thing. WinEd, comprehensive template editor. Um, install that the way that you have installed everything else. And um, you can add it to your apps. Um, I've done that. And here we go. Let me show you it. So if you open it, it'll load in the icon bar, which you can't you can't see mine where the camera is. And if you click on that, you'll have this. And um, middle click create. We'll name a window. We'll just call it main. Here we go. Here we have an empty window. We can scroll. We can scroll, we can move it, but most importantly, we can drag on different types of buttons. Like that, for example. Um, in fact, in our example, we are just, just going to have a writable icon and a cancel button. So if we double click on cancel, you'll see that we can change this text. I can change it to click on me. Now, it's indirected which means that the the properties of that button are not actually stored in the memory we've assigned for the button. It's stored somewhere else, and I'll show you about that. And it means we can have a name which is quite big. So we're going to have a 25 character name or text or whatever. Um, these are the flags, which we had to set manually last time for each button. And here's the button type. So we've got it on click, update, close that. And can you see it says click on me now. Now we're also going to change this to 25 and we're going to take all the text out of it update lovely here you go so um that's gonna be our window um we can change another window settings i'm going to change my work area um oh no i'm going to change the size of it i'm going to minimize it and um If I go into the work area settings, I'm going to take away my vertical scroll bar and horizontal scroll bar. Um, lovely, so that's that. Um, in fact, no, I'm going to change the title to, to template test. Here we go. Lovely. So uh, let's save this. You do that by middle clicking and hitting save. Uh, let's find a place to save it. I'm going to go into my tutorial six folder here and I'm uh, just going to stick it right in here. So we've got something called templates, which stores windows in it. Brilliant. So um, now if you don't remember template, if you don't remember tutorial six, that's when we made, that's when we made this. Um, let's go change our code to use this template. So, brilliant. Ah, yes, I remember this. So, first of all, we can take out our building of this icon. Oh. We can, we don't need to build the window. Take that out too. Um, load window into block is still useful. And uh, that's, the rest of it's all fine. So, let's do this. So, the foot, let's open up our, uh, let's open up our help. Brilliant. So first thing we need to do is open our template. So let's go find WIMP, open template. Lovely. Um, so it returns nothing, void, um, and it takes in a file name. So WIMP underscore open underscore template. And remember, we called it templates. This just opens the template file. It doesn't open the template inside it, um, even though it's called open templates, but brilliant. So that's going to load our template. Um, it loads it as a environmental variable, so every app can access it. Um, kind of, but that doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter how it works. We've now loaded it. Um, next thing we want to do is we want to use um, 
But we want to, uh, let's have a look. L load it. That was the one. We want to load in our, our actual template that we're going to be using. And woof, this is a big function. And we actually call it twice. It's a bit strange. So first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to make a new integer called context. I'm making it up here where I'm declaring all my other integers. Um, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. So if you were to load more than one window in, it needs to know where to read from. So the context is a it's a place in it points to a place in memory that um, is the next place to read from. Um, a bit confusing, I know, but it doesn't really matter now that we're it's just a good habit to get into. We're only loading one window here, so it shouldn't matter too much. Now, first of all, we need to know how much memory to allocate for our window because we don't know what's in the template. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call this variable, but we're going to use it to allocate memory. So wimp underscore load underscore template. Lovely. So first thing we need is a window. Now, because we're just getting the size, we're going to pass this thing called wimp get size. Uh, wimp underscore get underscore size. Like that. Next, we're going to, so it takes data. Um, we're not going to pass it that yet. Um, end, don't need that. Font ref, uh, we're going to put wimp underscore no underscore fonts because we're not passing it any fonts. Uh, name, we're going to call it main because that was the name of our window. And uh, context, zero. Um, in fact, we'll pass in context because context is zero, so it doesn't really matter. Um, then used and data used. So these are the two sizes that um, used is the size of the window. Data used is the size of the area of memory that we're going to put all of our indirect memory. So let's make these two integers. Int used and data underscore used. Lovely. So uh, back to here. Yeah. We'll have the address of used and the address of data underscore used. So now we've got enough information. We've got the size in the memory size of our window and all of its buttons, and we've got the memory size of all of the indirected data. So what we're going to do is going to create uh, another variable, which is um, a char pointer, and that's going to be data. Um, so we're going to call this again, and now it is actually going to load all of the, oh no, before that, we need to allocate all these things. So data equals malloc, and we want to allocate it data used. That's how big the data needs to be. And then window equals malloc. That's the window that we made, the WIMP window. Um, and that's going to be used just like that. Lovely. So next thing we need to do is call it again. WIMP underscore load underscore template. So now we're going to pass the window uh, like that. Then we're going to pass data. Now end, we need to find the end of our um, end of the big block of memory that this is, uh, that this template is. So how we're going to do that is we're going to go, well, it's the end of the data, I guess. So we're going to get a pointer, uh, the address of um, our data. And then we're going to add to it um, the size of the size of data, um, just like that. That's how we're going to. Uh, it's the size of I think point two data. I might be wrong there, but you may notice that it wants a const char. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in brackets because that's a memory address and that's an integer. 
who are going to do something called casting, which is where we make the compiler pretend that this is of a different type. So um, char const, that's a cast. Um, brilliant. Next, we need font ref, so that's the same, win underscore no underscore fonts. Then we need to the name. So that's exactly the same as last time, name. Uh, context, uh, context haven't changed, context. And then we don't need these anymore. Now, you'll notice that this does return an integer. That is the contents of the next, for the next time we call it. So we're gonna set our context equal to that. Um, so now that we have everything loaded up, we now need to, um, yeah, here we go, it's already there. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, load window into block, open window. So let's see if that's worked. I don't know, I don't know if it will. I may have made a mistake, that's quite exciting. So um, I got it, yeah, here we go. So I'm gonna set the directory here. I'm going to open up my terminal, I'm gonna hit make. Let's see what happens. Exciting, isn't it? Oh. Oh. Oh dear. Undefined reference to Wimp load templates. Top six line. It's, um, ah, it's load template, not loads of templates. Okay, I did it right the second time. Are there any more errors? No. Let's try that again. Oh, did I save it? Yeah, I did. <coughs> Hopefully I haven't made any more silly mistakes. Hmm. Has that worked? I think so. Oh dear, there's not enough memory to create this window or menu. How interesting. No, that can't be the issue. Let's have a look. Templates, name. Aha, get rid of that. I don't think we need, I don't think we need the address um, of parameter there. Let's try again, finally. Sorry about that. I'm trying to do this one from memory. I normally experiment a bit beforehand and then print out the code and have it on my lap when I made these, but I feel like that was cheating. So I'm, <laughs> um, I'm doing it this way. Brilliant. So that's compiled. Ah, signs of. Right, I'm going to stop the video and come back and have a look and see where I've made my mistake. Hello, I'm back. I found the problem. Really weird problem, um, well, weird that I did it this way. Um, it was here, um, where I said I wasn't quite sure. You don't need the address of data, because data is an address. So I put the address of an address of data, so that's not great. And also the size of the pointer of data will return, um, I think, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure, it won't. <laughs> won't return the right thing and it's silly doing that because we've already we've already got the size of data because we used this variable data used which represented the size that we wanted data to be so we put data underscore used now if I'm lucky we save that oh I've got rid of the window um, still in the right directory make see if I've typed out the fix right Oh, 
Oh, suspense. <laughs> Brilliant. So let's go into our, our location. Um, it was tutorial six, wasn't it? Yep. Let's have a look. Perfect. So look, our template test is loaded. If we open the task manager, we can see, oh, it still says tutorial six. Oh, I have to change that. Um, lovely. Um, nothing works yet though. So let's go and, uh, let's go change that. Okay. Then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, call a function wimp underscore close underscore template. Now this doesn't get rid of the template. It's because we've opened our template. We've loaded it into memory. So now we need to close the file. So, um, we're going to call that. And now we need to make it so um, this button does something. The plan is I want it so we can type text in here, click on the button and it will change the text of the button. So I first need to introduce you to a new event. Here we go, case wimp underscore mouse underscore click. Oh, <laughs> click. Um, brilliant, so let's just be tidy. Lovely. Now let me show you how to use this. Um, what it does is it loads a different thing into block. So let's go into block. Now block is of type union, which means it can be any of these things, but not all of them. It can only be one of these things at a time. And you can open block as if it's any of these things. Um, it's a bit confusing. I'd uh, Google that if you don't get it. But we're going to look at this pointer option here. Um, so we've got OS cord. We won't need that. Um, luckily we don't need to use if statements to work out where the button is. Um, we will use mouse button state, but not quite yet. We will use this one here. I, this is the handle, um, of the icon that we've clicked on. And if we open our template file and you hover over this, you'll see that they've got different icon numbers up here. Um, that's zero, that's one. Um, so the handle of this will be zero. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first have switch statement uh, inside a switch statement. Brilliant. So in this, we're gonna have um, block dot pointer dot i and inside this switch statement we're going to have case zero um, because that is the icon handle of our button and in here we're going to do something so what we're going to do is we're going to change the text of the button um, so if you remember window is where all the buttons are stored window icons zero because it's the first icon we added um i can't quite remember this so i'm gonna have a look so if i go into types and i go into wimp window if i go into icons here we go um what we're going to want is we're going to want okay so then dot data let's have a look at data now it's indirected text so um we're going to have to use this union and go dot in directed uh underscore text dot and now we have a pointer text that's the location of the text now we can't just hit equal because it's a character uh, array so we're going to use our string copy function um, so that's the location and we're going to move into it um, I'm going to go on a new line because this is taking quite a lot of space into that we're going to put um, the value yeah we'll go window icons one dot data dot in directed underscore text dot text and then 25 was the limit that we set 
so that should copy the text from our text box into our button when we click on it so i'm going to hit save there and uh, let's make it and see what happens I'll explain that again because I think I wasn't quite clear enough what we were doing, but well done if you got it. Um, oh, I've misspelled string copy. Um, there we go, miss out the R. I'll just take check that we've got. I'm sure I've included that in the materials. Um, try again. Make. Lucky this all goes to plan and work. <laughs> Lovely, that's worked that time. So let's open run image. We're going to type uh, just some anything, and can you see it's changed the text of the button? Just like that. Uh, I'll type some text. Hello uh, world. Hello world. Lovely. So um, yeah, we've actually managed to make in not even that much code. Um, an application that does something um, brilliant, but I will I will show you an issue. I will show you an issue. Um, say I go into another directory and I set the directory here, then I open our application. You see, file templates not found. That's because it needs the the directory needs to be set to the uh, directory that templates is because when we loaded in templates. Um, oh, we loaded in templates. Um, here, I just put the title of it. And in the next tutorial, what we're going to go over is um, we're going to go over the application directory and how to use that and how to set up an almost conventional um, WIM path. With um, yeah, I'll show you one I've made. Here's one I made earlier. Um, I go into my template test here. Yeah, this so it's a folder with an exclamation mark. Double click it, it'll open your app. My one uses the icon bar, and this app really does something very similar. You click on the button and it changes the text of the other button. And I'll show you how to do that. This is the project we will be making. But um, next tutorial, we're going to go over getting things onto the icon bar and uh, sort of conventional way of making an app in a uh, risk OS. Brilliant. Um, I hope that was clear. Uh, I said I'd go over this just one more time. So we do a case, whether the map, it checks if there's been a mouse click event, then we're going to switch between all of the different buttons we have. Um, case zero, because if we open our template file, this button has an icon number of zero. And then um, we're just going to copy the text from the um, from the text box into our button text, and we're limiting it to twenty five characters because we set we set it to only have a maximum text length of twenty five characters. Um, lovely, that's that tutorial done. I'll see you next time. Bye.